welcome back to my channel i am fully aware that i look like crap but this is a face of a girl Ooh, the face of a girl who has been crying all day long because my dumpling boy was admitted to the emergency vet and luckily he is clear to be released and to be picked up and to come home so that's not gonna be until 8 30 it's currently seven o'clock but i was doing a little bit of scrolling on facebook marketplace and i found a woman who's selling vintage clothing i told her that my budget is like $200 so she welcomed me to her home to go see what she has so that's where we're going right now in West Covina so let's go check it out so the woman brought us into her basement I was like oh this is literally the start of a scary movie and then my second thought was like all right where's the clothes this can't possibly be it so I was slightly disappointed with how little there was just because I was told that there was a lot more clothes but this blouse was also another reason why I wanted to check out her clothing but she didn't give a size in the listing so in person this blouse was so freaking tiny women back then were so small that my broad shoulders could never she also had a handful of accessories and I mean I had no other choice than just to go through them because there wasn't that much inventory but that hat was really giving me 90s Mary Kate and Ashley. I'm not too much into bags, but that floral bag really caught my eye. Also, sorry in advance for the very minimal clips. We were just hoping there'd be a lot more inventory to show off, and there really was not. So this was the best that I was able to do. Sorry to interrupt our antique shopping, but I do want to thank Dacier. They're a company that reproduces high-end luxury scents at a fraction of the price, and they're still keeping the same exact quality. The only difference is that they're cutting the infamous brand tax. So they let me choose a few scents off their site. So the first one I have is Fruity Magnolia. This is inspired by Versace. And then I did pick up something for Arthur. This is Aromatic Star Anise, inspired by Dior. And then My Holy Grail Floral Violet, inspired by Marc Jacobs. I for sure am a floral girl, and every time I tell people that, they're always like, ooh, she likes to smell like a granny's closet. No, I'm more into like the bright, youthful floral scent, so I'll give you my top three scents. In no particular order, floral violet, aquatic peony, and fruity magnolia. You'll thank me later. But if you really don't know where to start and you don't know what scents you're into, don't worry about it because Dossier offers a quiz on their site to help you find your perfect scent. So it's a really easy quiz. It just asks you smells that you love, any smells that you dislike, fragrances that you prefer, like masculine, feminine, or unisex, and so on. And then it finds a match for you. So my results ended up being fruity magnolia, which I think is pretty spot on. Fruity, something more playful, and then magnolia, something floral. Oral. And again, this one is inspired by Versace, and this has become my new everyday scent. But if you're not into quizzes, that's totally okay too. Dossier does have a risk-free system, so this pretty much allows all their customers to try perfumes before actually committing to them. So if you decide that a scent just isn't for you, if you just don't like it, they do offer a 30-day return period for all in open bottles, so you do get a full refund, no questions asked. Dossier did come through with a discount code, so you can use TwinL10 at checkout to save 10% off your order, but definitely take advantage of those bundle deals because you can save up to 20% off and free shipping when you bundle three bottles or more. But if you want the instant gratification of wearing your scents like right now, you can find Dossier at Walmart and they carry six of their best top sellers. So I'll leave a link down below where you can find a store near you. Let's get back to antique shopping. I did tell the owner that I was really into bloomers, so she ran upstairs to go grab a piece that she wasn't planning on selling, and I immediately fell in love. Just, I mean, look at this. It's a two-piece set. It has a blue ribbon going through it. It was a very delicate piece, and it was one of her most, like, prized possessions. And lastly, just to show how small this little room was, here's a quick little glimpse. Guys, oh, f We've got our goodies, so let's head on home. I'll show them off. All right, y'all, we are back now in such better spirits. Dumpling is finally pooping, peeing, eating, and right now he's sleeping, so I've got my eye on him, but let's talk about some clothes and some shoes. Oh, no, first of all, let's talk about this woman's house because it was absolutely beautiful. So as soon as you enter, there's a sunroom, glass everywhere, and then when you get into the common area or the living room, eyes on you from every corner of the room because she had so many dolls and i'm not talking about like 10 or 20 dolls but like 50 to 100 and surprisingly it wasn't creepy but more cool but maybe they had to do with the fact that i went during the day but this is also the first time that i've ever purchased vintage clothing and antique clothing so i actually had to google this because i had no idea vintage is at least 20 years old whereas antique is at least 100 years old so a few pieces are outside of my comfort zone and some thing I would never pick up. Oh, and 
it wasn't cheap. When I first reached out to them, they said that the starting price for all the items were $30. And so I was like, ooh, ooh, that is way outside of my budget. I'm so sorry, but I don't think I'll be able to make the drive. And then about 30 minutes later, she reached out again, was like, actually, I can cut you a deal. Just please come over and shop. I did, and it still ended up being very expensive. So let's just get started with our first item. She didn't have very many shoes, but I did pick up these. And you're probably wondering, Danielle, these look like old lady wedding shoes. Yes, they most likely are. But on Instagram, I came across this photo here and I just totally fell in love. Only buying those brand new, <laughs> way too expensive. So I feel like these are a pretty good dupe for them. Are they exactly the same? No, but I still think they're really cute. And I will warn you guys now, Everything is just about stained, has a hole in it. It's just damaged in some sort of way. So you can see a lot of discoloration on the sequence on one shoe more than the other. But you know what? I personally don't mind it. I feel like I can dress this up in two ways. Something very feminine, playing more into like the coquette style or doing something more modern with like flare jeans and a corset. Our first clothing item is this corset. Guys, I finally have one. I've been looking for a white one for the longest time. And the fact that this one already has a pink ribbon running through it, Easy. And this one was $20. I feel like that's a fair price. I feel like that's about the same price I would pay at like a local LA flea. So I'm not too mad about it. It is sheer lace construction and then the back just has a regular hook and eye closures. The cups do fit me a little bit too big, but that's okay because I'm probably not gonna wear it alone, but use it more as a layering piece. And then this one does have more of the yellow discoloration on the back where the closure's at. But again, I keep telling myself this is authentic, vintage, antique. I don't know if this one's vintage or antique, so if you guys are like pretty well versed with fashion history, please just let me know down below if you're able to date these items and if you think I paid a good price for it or a bad price. <laughs> this next item that I'm gonna show off is my favorite of the entire haul. I am leaving the grail though for the end, but this is a piece that actually has a brand tag. The rest don't. So this is a brand Jolie Madame and it is so feminine. So pretty and it's this maxi dress it's pink it has ruffles it's lace it also has boning in the bust so it's pretty structured but so comfy I could just envision this with like little pigtails pink cowboy boots and this was a dress that was featured on the Facebook marketplace listing which really caught my eye so I thought it would have been gone but there it was sitting in her closet so I was like Yes, absolutely. This was the second most expensive piece at $40. I definitely don't wanna sit here and bore you guys with fashion history. Number one, because I personally am not knowledgeable on this subject. And second, because I don't know how to date clothing, so I did get help from Haley from Details Vintage. So Haley, thank you so much. She suggested that I jump onto Etsy and kind of just use key terms to try to find items. So this is uh, the red regret. So I found this listing here that is apparently a rare find at $115. We have this one that I think is pretty similar because of the nylon construction and it has the peplum, $68. And then this last one, which is pretty similar, $30. But these are all claiming that this shirt might be from like the 1940s to 50s. So the similarities we have is the nylon construction, the puff sleeves, the lace detailing, and the peplum at the bottom. On the hanger, it was absolutely beautiful, but it was pretty dark in the basement that we were in. So I couldn't really see the color until I tried it on. And one of the things I'm always complaining about in every video is that I don't like specific colors like this because it just makes me look naked. And this is exactly what it does. So I showed it to my other friend, Luisa from Funky Cool Threads. She absolutely loves it. So I'll probably just gift it to her. Okay, now let's really get into like the old, old stuff. So the last few items I'm thinking are either again to Haley, huge thank you. Victorian, which ranges between 1860s to the 1890s, or Edwardian, which are the early 1900s. And you'll see why. So you guys know that I've been really obsessed with bloomers. Doesn't matter what length, either short or very long. And when I saw this jumpsuit, I was like, what the freaking heck? This is absolutely cool. So back then, obviously this was their undergarments or lingerie, but it is so modest. You're definitely not showing off as much skin as you would with modern lingerie. But at the same time, I feel like you can wear this now as an everyday look and it's totally acceptable. And at the same time, you're gonna be wearing history on your body. But this one did cost $30. And again, we do have a lot of discoloration, stains on the back here that are a little bit more orange. So when I jumped onto Etsy, I did find one that was pretty similar again another item that is a rare find at $193 so when you compare the reselling price for how much I bought it I feel 
like that's pretty damn good. This also fits me a little bit too loose in the bust area, so I really don't want to put it under the sewing machine, but maybe try to fix it with snap closures and buttons. This next dress gave me such a headache just to try to figure out how to put it on. And then when I did finally get it onto my body, it didn't fit. But I did manage to find two listings on Etsy that kind of gave, you know, the similar type style. So this first one here, again, another rare find at $315. And then this blouse, which is another rare find at $195. I paid... $30 for this one. So it's a shame it doesn't fit, but I feel like if I moved around some of the snap closures and some of these hook and eye closures, it'll probably fit a little bit better. But it is another item that is fairly damaged. We have a lot of holes here. Here's a hole that I found just now, but you see all of these little pinholes on the skirt? It's pretty much covered in them. There's also quite a bit of discoloration around the bust. Surprisingly, nothing on the armpits because I tend to destroy my whites. And then also it does have a satin drawstring around the neckline and it is ripped. So I'm gonna have to replace that. I'm thinking adding a little bit more color. So either a satin blue or pink ribbon. But I really like this one because of the length. It is more of a maxi and it has a tiered hem here. This one's gonna be a project though because I am gonna try to fix all of those holes, at least just pack them up. I'm gonna move around some of the hook and eye closures, the snaps. I really want this one to stay in my wardrobe, so we just gotta fix her up quite a bit. If you wanna see that journey, it'll be on either Instagram or TikTok. We're down to our last item, which I think is the grill item and the item that I spent the most money on. So when I was talking to the woman who sold me all this clothes, she was like, you know what, if you like bloomers, I have something to show you, but I have to grab it from upstairs. She wasn't gonna sell it to me whatsoever, but then I saw it, I was like, Oh my God, that is absolutely beautiful. And then at the end, I was like, if you ever want to let go of that boomer set, no, I'm here. I will gladly take it off your hands. And she was like, you know what? I can let it go, but for the right price. And she priced it at $100. So this is the $100 set that I picked up. It has a blue ribbon through it. We have this little sleeveless top. And then look at these bloomers. They're super high-waisted, have a lot of space and room in the hip area. The hem has a scallop detail with the blue ribbon too. And as much as I love this set, I really should have checked the measurements because I'm a 27 inch waist. This is a 24. It doesn't even freaking fit me. That was very impulsive and dumb purchase. It's also just such an old piece that I don't want to modify it too much to fit me. I feel like it should be left in its original state for as long as possible. So I really am debating, should I just put it under the sewing machine, tailor it to fit my own body, or should I resell it to someone who actually fits these measurements? Because this was so expensive. So I do have to thoroughly wash these, but if you know what time period and era these come from, please let me know down below in the comments. But y'all, that pretty much does it for the end of my vintage n and clothes haul. If you liked any of the items, let me know down below. I don't know if I did the best job at showing off the awesome listings that you can find on Facebook Marketplace, but if you take some time, just scroll around using key terms like clothes clean out, wholesale, vintage, estate sale, you might just come across something really cool. As far as my haul, I am content with a few pieces, others not so much, but overall, I did spend drum roll. $230, which is so much money for the little amount of clothes that I purchased, just in my opinion. And because it is so outside of my style, honestly, I think I was just in my feels about Dumpling being at the vet and not knowing whether he was gonna get any better. So just learn from me. If you do find a listing, make sure it's clothes that you see yourself wearing every single day. Be firm with your own budget. And if anything, just negotiate. The worst that they can say is no, and then you move on to the next listing. But a huge thanks to Dossier again. So don't forget, you can get 10% off your order if you use TwinL10 at checkout. But as always, y'all, I do post videos at least once a week. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!